Please welcome Red Hat President and Chief Executive Officer, Matt Hicks. Hello everyone and welcome to the second day of Red Hat Summit 2023. Yesterday, we talked about how you're being asked to achieve conflicting goals, doing more with less, but at the same time, growing your business and driving innovation. We showed you how Red Hat can help you optimize your business, maximizing the skills and resources you do have, while also using Red Hat technology to fill in the gaps and make your teams more efficient. Today, we're going to dive into how you can drive innovation at scale from turning cloud sprawl into cloud strategy and addressing new opportunities at the edge, to navigating an ever-shifting security landscape and the growing demand for sustainable technology operations. Yesterday, I spoke about this moment of AI for technology and just how powerful that is. But we sometimes let the risk of another moment overshadow that, the risk of a recession or an economic downturn. Here's another way to view that moment. Did you know that roughly half of the Fortune 500 started during a recession? Why does this happen? This isn't a new phenomenon. Plato is often credited with the phrase that necessity is the mother of invention. It may not feel like the time to drive innovation or make sweeping changes to your company, but the gift of necessity can actually provide the ideal conditions to do so. It's about prioritization finding the parts of your business that are core to your success and investing there. And while that may sound like common sense, we all know that it is easily said much harder to do. It may sound counterintuitive, but when times are good, it is often much tougher to take the risky path with the reward because there is no need to take that risk. But when you are forced to prioritize, forced to make trade-offs, the data would indicate that is when many dreams become reality, inventions are discovered, companies are founded, and new technologies are realized. It's no different for us. We see this as the time to drive innovation because we hope it'll help you unlock yours. 
Yesterday, we covered new innovations in Ansible designed to supercharge operator skills and the Red Hat Developer Hub and Service Interconnect to speed up development. But as we progress in development and operations, there is nothing that slows down both more than the uncertainty with security. Today, we will be introducing our work in two specific areas, our trusted software supply chain and our advanced cluster security cloud service. We will put 30 years of experience in creating production-ready open source code in your hands as a cloud service helping you build a foundation of verified components. And with our advanced cluster security service, we can help you manage security in environments that move faster than humans can act by pushing security further left towards development. We are focused on speeding up development and operations without having to compromise on security. But even with the capabilities and new technology innovation to work with, during tough times, a lot of people become risk averse. This makes sense. The knee-jerk reaction is to hunker down and weather the storm. But it's not about avoiding all risk. It's about focusing on the risks with the right reward the risks you wouldn't have taken in a good environment, the risks that could truly set you apart. And of course, the risky path is never straightforward. If it was, everyone would take it. So you have to look for places of trusted innovation. Then be ready to fail fast and adjust. This isn't just the moment of AI. It's a moment that sharpens our focus and allows us to focus our resources. And it's a moment that will change everything after it, much like my first experience with my own Linux kernel. Let's use that. Let's fail fast, adjust fast, and innovate even faster. Welcome Red Hat Senior Vice President of Partner Ecosystem Success, Stephanie Chiris, AWS Vice President of Worldwide Channels and Alliances, Ruba Borno, and Salonis Senior Vice President of Ecosystem and Industries, Jean Resnick. <laughs> Ruba and Jean, thank you so much for joining us here at Red Hat Summit. Honestly, we're so excited to have you on main stage. We've done so much collaborative work together. We have a lot to share with all of you, so we should probably just jump in and get started. Ruba, let's start with you. When we were prepping for this, I actually couldn't believe that it's been 14 years that AWS and Red Hat have been working together. In some ways, some of the projects have been longstanding, but there's been so much new innovation. In some ways, the partnership feels really new. Absolutely. So first of all, thank you so much, Stephanie, for the invitation. And thank you for the AWS and the Red Hat teams for the amazing work on the partnership. I mean, 14 years, that's almost as long as AWS has been around. So this partnership started with Red Hat Enterprise Linux in 2008. Now, since then, we've expanded for key workloads like SAP HANA. We extended the strategic alliance, integrating more closely AWS services with Red Hat OpenShift Container Platform. A couple of years ago, we introduced the Red Hat OpenShift service on AWS, or ROSA, which I'm sure we'll talk about some more. And most recently, just last October, we're supporting the Red Hat Ansible team's integration of Ansible with our AWS Cloud Control API. Now, why are we doing all of this, and why does it feel so new? Because we continuously see this as the integration point that will expose the full breadth and depth of AWS services to our customers to build, scale, and automate their AWS cloud services. And I'm really excited not only about the long history of innovation that we have together, but also our extensive partner ecosystems that are bringing this innovation to customers. 
you know, you've really touched on kind of the, the heart and the center of our partnership has been that focus on bringing together for customers the very best of the Red Hat experience and the very best of the AWS experience. How do you see our two companies continuing to work together to make innovation easy and accessible for customers? So I firmly believe that partnership is a force multiplier for customer outcomes. And what the Red Hat and AWS teams do is we're both working backwards from the customer. So AWS's unique customer experience brings a breadth of services, efficiency, and simple procurement. Now, with Red Hat, we've made it easier for our customers to procure AWS services and Red Hat products through the AWS console and the AWS marketplace with a single invoice. Red Hat provides this secure and scalable platform. You bring a vast ecosystem of certified workloads to run on it. And so by bringing these two things together, we really think it help, believe that it helps our customers innovate for the future. And I think we'll keep doing that, hopefully, for another 14 years. Yeah, you can probably see, Gene, that uh, Rubert and I are really passionate about trying to pull together work on behalf of customers, which makes your perspective super important. Yeah. How has OpenShift and the work we're doing with AWS helped Salonis? Yeah, well, I guess, first of all, thank you for your partnership. I think uh, we've been the direct beneficiary of the innovation you know, through Rosa, through all of the collaboration that you've done together at all levels. And for those of you who may be not less familiar with Salonis, we're, uh, we're a software company. We, uh, we are focused on the area called, we're a market leader in the area called process mining, which is basically using enterprise data to improve business performance and process efficiency. And uh, you know, we have about 1,400 customers operating all across the world, huge uh, operations in Europe, uh, in Germany, in uh, Japan, in, uh, in the United States, of course. And you know, for us, you know, it's been a journey. You know, we started the relationship with AWS and Red Hat two years ago around Rosa specifically. And you know, when we started, we were 100% on-prem, right? So our, our software was running on-prem, interfacing with a lot, of the, a lot of the systems of our customers. And over the last two years, we've migrated 98% of our customers to the cloud with a majority of it running, running on Rosa. And again, it, it enables Salonis to focus on what we do best, which is operate at the application layer, focus on our customers and, and their needs, and really rely on the strategic partnership as the core anchor around which we manage our infrastructure and all the cloud-based services that they deliver. I mean, it means so much to hear how Rosa helps you transform your business. So, so great to hear, hear that. Do you want to talk a bit about the value that from your side as well? Well, it's a, it's a privilege to be on stage here with Gene to talk about going from 0% in the cloud to 98% in the cloud in two years. I mean, just incredible work by the teams. And that's why we were working together. It's really to, to bring value to customers. Now, Rosa, just to go into a little bit more detail on that, it's a service that's operated by Red Hat and jointly supported with AWS to provide fully managed Red Hat OpenShift. So what are the benefits? You get a pay-as-you-go billing on a single invoice through AWS. Customers like Salonis, like Delta, BP, Boston University, and Verizon use Rosa for the ability to achieve up to 35% faster application feature development. Exactly what Gene yeah. said, allow them to focus on the applications and the value that they want there. And so we're excited about Rosa, and we think that it gives a lot of value to customers. One is a clear path to running in the cloud. Rosa delivers OpenShift that many enterprises already use on premises today, and it simplifies the ability to move workloads to AWS as their business needs change so they can focus on that application layer. It also acts like a native AWS service, so you can access and use Red Hat OpenShift on demand with a self-service experience through the AWS console. And then last but not least, flexible, cost-efficient pricing, scale the business up and down as the business needs uh, transform. So in the example of Salonis' execution management system on Rosa, it enables their customers to focus on business improvement processes while taking advantage of Kubernetes innovation to speed up time to value. This also sets up a platform of innovation to build and help support key security requirements, which is something that we hear from every customer today. So Gene, I'd love to get your take on security. Yeah, so uh, you know, I think for us, you know, we're kind of at the next stage of our growth. We currently have about 1,400 customers, 450 global 2000s, and we continue to scale and get into more vertical 
uh, application areas. A big focus for us is the federal market and of course the Fed Cloud, the Gov Cloud, and all the capabilities that are required to really serve uh, the federal market are super critical to us. And we're very pleased that the investments that have been made by both Red Hat and by AWS to really create a world-class infrastructure that we can leverage, remain focused at the application layer, help our government become even more efficient than they are today, and ultimately deliver value for all of us as citizens. Honestly, I think that statement you made, Gene, about allowing Salonis to focus on what you do best at the application layer, and we're allowing AWS to do what you do best, bringing that together with we do best at Red Hat. That's what it's all about in this collaboration. It's delivering value to your customers, which is so important. Gene, thank you so much for sharing the journey at Salonis, and thank you for the continued partnership, Ruba. This is what it's all about, collaborating to thank deliver you, value to you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. With innovation and technology being so critical, so absolutely essential to getting work done differently, smarter, faster, it's no wonder that there is more demand on all of us to do more and to scale. But let's face it, that's what we live for. Delivering growing business, tackling worthy challenges, making the very most of an opportunity. As proven by the world of open source, that gets a whole lot easier when we innovate together. This is what energizes us at Red Hat about being part of a vibrant ecosystem. We roll up our sleeves with our partners in order to build solutions that help you do more with less. We take it on together. We work with ecosystem innovators to co-create capabilities that address your priorities, your realities, whether it's meeting new end user demands, bringing new services online, or supporting increasingly remote business operations. Accessing innovation helps you deliver and scale. Back in the day, scaling only meant adding data center capacity. Today, scaling is done through open hybrid cloud, offering a combination of public clouds, private clouds, edge deployments, and data center capacity. The real opportunity is the ability to architect, deploy, and operate your open hybrid cloud, optimized for your needs, simply and efficiently. Flexibility and choice without compromise. This is, again, where innovation comes in. Our goal in the work we do with ecosystem partners is to help you seize innovation easily and get the most value from open hybrid cloud. We do the work on the back end so that you get the simplicity on the front end. Dell has been one of our longstanding partners in this space. They have evolved their strategy and their portfolio with the market needs, and we have innovated side by side throughout. Two examples of this are Dell validated designs for OpenShift Container Platform and Telco InfraBlocks for Red Hat OpenShift. Intelligent innovation is one of the reasons we work so closely with our partners like Dell to deliver solutions that simplify and optimize IT. Let's hear directly from Dell. Please welcome Dell Technologies President of Strategic Partnerships, Todd Pavone. Hey, Todd. How you doing? Good. Good to see so you. So great to see you Good at Summit. You. Meet everyone. Hello, everyone. <laughs> you and I have worked a lot together with the teams over the past months in order to pull together some big news this week. But before we jump into that, let's build a little bit of suspense. Could you talk about our relationship, what it's meant to Dell over the years, and how it's continued to evolve? Sure, sure. First off, thank you so much for inviting me to share the stage with you today. It's been tremendous working with you and the team for the last year plus. Um, <clears throat> both Dell and Red Hat have a very deep history of working together. We've been partners for over 24 years. Um, both companies are, are rooted in technology and innovation, starting with our founders who innovated and created in their dorm rooms in the 80s and 90s. 
But today, I am incredibly excited to share with you how we're doubling down on our partnership. Um, what do I mean by doubling down, and what does that mean? First off, it means we're going to do more deep co-engineering and collaboration on new solutions, which we're announcing the first one today, and I can't wait to get to that. Two, we're going to enable 35,000 plus of our sales folks and go-to-market leaders around the world to work together for our joint customers and new customers. We're enabling hundreds of our partners who we work with every single day, and we're integrating our services and support to provide a world-class, seamless experience. At the end of the day, it's all about our customers leveraging our great technologies and partnering together, and I can't be more excited than I am right now. Uh, and it really, that really talks about, you talk about doubling down, we've been on a journey in our partnership, this is a pivotal moment in that partnership as you brought up, and your portfolio and strategy has changed as well as you've gone through that, and this week at Dell Tech World, you talked a lot about the changes in Apex for Cloud platforms. Could you talk a little bit about the customer outcomes that sure. you're looking for Apex to deliver? Sure, I'll take a little step back, so I can't believe this as I'm standing here, but I, I've been in technology for 31 years, uh, my first job, I wrote some really bad COBOL code for a utility company in Hartford, Connecticut. I was writing COBOL in their basement. And back then, some of you may remember this, but IT was just a support function for the business. Today, IT is a differentiator if a business will succeed or fail, right? That is a, a daunting responsibility for all of us, right? And to make matters more challenging or more difficult, we always deal with budgets that are flat or, or decreasing. The vast majority of our IT budget is spent on maintenance, not on strategic new initiatives. And the world is moving so incredibly fast when it comes to technology and getting more complicated. The average customer is managing more than three clouds and just complete challenge. So to answer your question, what outcomes are customers looking for today? They want solutions that are fully integrated in turnkey. They want solutions that are resilient and secure. They want solutions that can scale. They want solutions that have seamless support. They want solutions that are incredibly cost effective. If you can deliver those solutions, you can spend less time on maintenance, more time on strategic initiatives, and really deliver that promise of enabling your business to succeed. A lot of those key points, Todd, that you talked about are about the experience, the customer experience. And that takes real engineering work to deliver. That takes. The hard teams work. pulling together, absolutely hard work. Um, we did make some announcements this week together. You want to share the news with everyone? Yeah, ab absolutely. So this past Monday at Dell Technology World in Las Vegas, by the way, I'm very happy I'm here in Boston and not Las Vegas, in front of 8,000 attendees, we announced the Dell Apex Cloud Platform for OpenShift. It is a turnkey, fully integrated, on-prem OpenShift platform. It is engineered, the hard work that you talked about. It's engineered collaboratively with Dell, and Red Hat to optimize and extend OpenShift deployments on premise with all the outcomes you just described. In addition, we had three really important design principles. Number one, accelerate time to market with a purpose built platform. Number two, seamlessly extend applications and data across your IT landscape. And lastly, enhance control with deep security and compliance. Couldn't be more excited about this news. Um, and I guess the three takeaways for everybody here, it's all about our partnership that we've had for over two decades and doubling down on that partnership. It's all about innovating, creating solutions to help our customers help transform their businesses. And we're incredibly excited about what we just announced and the new offer that's available. And I'm so excited about this news because Todd and I have been very personally involved in this. So it's really great to get a chance to share it with all of you. Todd, thank you so much for thank joining you. us here at Red Hat Summit. Thank you Summit. so much for having really me. Really appreciate, appreciate it. Thank it. you. One key reason we work so closely with partners like Dell is that they bring capabilities that is in demand in open hybrids clouds. By working together in a deeply integrated way, we make it easier to use, easier to get, and easier to deliver innovation that you can be confident in. These strategies start with a platform that is reliable, consistent, and familiar, no matter where it's running, from the data center to any public cloud to emerging edge operations. For decades, we have met this demand with Red Hat Enterprise Linux. 
the world's leading enterprise Linux platform. No matter where you've deployed RHEL, it offers the same capabilities, the same commands, and uses the same IT operational skills. That's inside the platform. Outside the platform, where RHEL integrates with the rest of your IT world, consistency is just as important and valuable. RHEL already provides a consistent operating system backbone across your hybrid cloud operations. Today, we're simplifying how you manage RHEL consistently, no matter where it's running. We're bringing a unified management experience to Red Hat Enterprise Linux as part of Red Hat Insights, using the already existing Red Hat Hybrid Cloud Console as the single point of control. This makes managing RHEL across your hybrid cloud a simpler and more straightforward experience for all users, regardless of skill level. These new management capabilities build on the pre-existing features of Red Hat Insights, our predictive analytics software as a service offering. For finding problems across your REL estate before they impact production. In addition to management, Insights now includes the REL Image Builder service, which enables you to build and rapidly deploy standardized, compliant, and optimized OS images from a web browser across your hybrid cloud. More than just finding potential issues, Insights now adds Red Hat satellite capabilities to your hybrid cloud console. Satellite offers an extensive control plane for managing, patching, and monitoring RHEL at scale. Previously, it was only available on premises. Now, Insights with Image Builder and Satellite is available from a single web interface. It allows management capabilities to stretch from your data center to your cloud environment and out to the edge. Take patching at scale as one example. As Insights finds potential problems, you can use the same interface to push patches to every single RHEL instance everywhere for faster, simpler, more consistent, and therefore more secure updates. And this is all part of your Red Hat Enterprise Linux subscription. We're making management a core part of the RHEL experience. We know that Linux is no longer just about the kernel. It's about how you use it, how you manage it, and how you maintain it. Let's take a look at these new management capabilities in action. Please join me in welcoming Red Hat's Rich Dorito and Scott Herald to the stage. All right. Thank you, Stephanie. I'm Rich Dorito, and we are going to show you today how to take an image, create an image, deploy it to the public cloud, multiple public clouds here, as well as stand up instances from that image, as well as patch them using the powerful services included as part of Red Hat Insights. So firstly, what we can see here is that I have the image builder application up. I'm going to select a couple of clouds here. We're going to deploy to AWS and Microsoft Azure. We're going to make sure all of our account information is all good. We went ahead and set this up in advance so y'all don't have to see me typing for a few seconds. We can go ahead and select how we want to connect that system. We have a number of ways that you can connect the Red Hat Enterprise Linux system. We're going to select our most advanced set of capabilities, such as connecting to Red Hat Insights itself. We'll use an activation key instead of usernames and passwords, because that makes it easier for us to do automation. Next, we're going to select on our file system configuration, right? I'm going to pick the automatic partitioning here. But if you have a security requirement, such as disastig, CIS benchmark, you have the option of doing custom partitioning here. Next, we're going to go ahead and we're going to add some packages. We're going to build some web servers. So I'm going to add an HTTPD package. I'll go ahead and search for that, add that to our image build. 
Next, we're going to go ahead, and now we can actually add even custom repositories. So most Red Hat Enterprise Linux users use the Apple repository. We're going to pull some content from that repository as well. So we'll go ahead and select Apple 9, we'll search for a package as well. And then we're going to add that to our build. Lastly, we're going to give this a name. So let's call it rel 92 a And then a quick review of all of our settings. And then lastly, when I hit create this image, we're going to build this image. And then we're going to actually push it out to the two clouds that I selected. And that'll take about 20 minutes or so. But for the sake of this demo, we've went ahead and already created a few images. And now Scott's going to show you how we take those images and deploy them across multiple public clouds. Scott? Yeah, thanks, Rich. So here I can go ahead and I can quickly click that I want to launch that image that was built. Uh, because we're already connected into our cloud providers, I already have all of the settings pre-populated that make it really easy to make that choice. Uh, here I'm connecting to an AWS instance. We have a concept of system templates in there. So if I select this template, and because Rich installed the Apache web server, I'm going to go ahead and choose a front-end system. This will help actually take care on the cloud side which networks I connect to, which firewall rules I have open, which policies are applied to it to make sure that as soon as it's loaded, it can actually function as a web server out of the box. Uh, I can simply select my instance type here. I'm going to choose a T2 medium. And I can deploy this. My capacity planner called said, for my ad campaign, I need 45 instances of this. So I'm going to go ahead, hit that 45. Uh, next, last thing that I have to do is just select my SSH key. Uh, for this purposes, I'm going to use that SSH key. That is the same key that's going to be used by Ansible to be able to take the next level of automation once the image is deployed to do that last mile of configuration at the application level. A quick review again of what settings I choose and clicking on launch. And that quickly, it's connecting up to the AWS web service, launching these instances, and has given me validation that my instances are now available up and running in the cloud. So I flip over to my AWS web console and I do the refresh. You can see that I have a whole bunch of pending instances that quickly from an image that Rich created, handed over to me, and within two minutes, managed to deploy a cloud. And while I did this, I think I heard a groan in the background from Vince Danon saying, oh no, what about the security fixes? So I think we might want to double check that, Rich. Yeah, sure. Thank you, Scott. So now that I have these images and instances stood up and running, we now have the capability to go ahead and deploy any patch or remediation that we need to to these systems using the powerful services at Red Hat Insights. So as you can see here, I've selected the HTTPD bug fix update because we want to fix some issues that we have with HTTPD. You can go ahead and hit remediate. It's going to ask me to add those, those patches to a playbook. I'm going to give this a name. Just call it HTTPD fix. My typing it's not good. Here we go. That's how you know it's live. Yep. <laughs> Gives me the opportunity to review the systems that are going to be affected. I can even you know, remove a few systems if I need to. We're going to go ahead and then hit Next. And then we hit Submit. We actually haven't done anything yet. We just created a playbook that lists a number of actions, in this case, installing the fixes for the HTTPD package. Now that I've created this playbook, I can go ahead and take a look at it or run it against all of the systems that are directly connected to Red Hat. So as you can see, I have a button here to download the playbook. Let's say I wanted to you know, show for change control purposes what changes are actually going to be affected on the system. I can download that playbook. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to hit execute this playbook. We can see that we have systems directly connected that we can immediately remediate. And then we can go and execute that playbook. Very simply, I can take the powerful services that are at Red Hat Insights see vulnerabilities and bug fixes that are available on my systems and easily address them across my environment. So what we've shown you is that we can take an image that we've created from scratch, deploy it to multiple public clouds, and patch the systems that are built from that image very simply. So with that, I'm going to pass it over to Francis, who will be talking more about some of our Edge offerings. Please welcome Red Hat Vice President and General Manager of In-Vehicle Operating System and Edge, Francis Chow. Change is the only constant in life. I'll take it one step further. The generation of data from change, along with change itself, are the only constants. Every change in our daily lives, every shift in the global economics creates data. Historically, data has helped inform our decisions. But now, the majority of our decisions depend on data. 
whether it's a smartphone in your pocket, the infotainment system in your car, or a manufacturing facility, increasingly, more data is flowing from the edge. More likely than not, the edge is also where the data have to be processed, as we can't wait for the data to be moved and processed at the data center. With innovations at the edge, we no longer have to. Traditionally, edge systems are built with bespoke software and hardware for single function or purpose. This silo approach is not sustainable. For Red Hat, we don't treat the edge as a separate footprint when it comes to software infrastructure. It is part of the hybrid cloud, just as data centers and public clouds are. Instead of having silos, we integrate edge with the rest of the hybrid cloud. We need more standardized ways to build, deploy, and manage edge devices and process data at the edge. Whether it, you're building a 5G network, transforming your retail point of sale system, or building a compute infrastructure in space, every company that aspires to leverage real-time data for better decisions making or better customer experience need to address the design and operational challenges at the edge. Red Hat's hybrid cloud solution is a consistent platform anywhere and everywhere, even at the edge, providing the development and operational consistency businesses are asking for. Many industries are undergoing transformations at the edge. One of these industries is automotive. As vehicles are becoming software-defined, they look more and more like data centers on the move. These vehicles are expected to gather and analyze data, provide updates, assist or make driving decisions, and deploy applications all at the edge. Last year, we announced our collaboration with General Motors around Red Hat in-vehicle operating system, an open source platform that can be continuously certified to meet the rigorous safety and compliance requirements of the automotive world while keeping pace with rapid innovation. Today, we are pleased to announce a partnership with ETAS, a boss subsidiary, to deliver a pre-integrated base layer software platform combining the best of Red Hat in-vehicle operating system and ETAS automotive middleware technologies. This integrated platform will lower the development costs and further accelerate time to market for automakers. With a streamlined out-of-the-box experience, developers can innovate more quickly using the tools they already know. We talk about the importance of a consistent platform from the edge to the cloud. With Red Hat in-vehicle operating system, developers know that the underlying operating system that they are building on is the same as what ultimately will run on production vehicles. And the same platform can be extended to data centers and the public cloud for virtual testing and potentially simulating the entire car with a digital trend, further streamlining innovation. Now let's see what this collaboration between Red Hat and Gitas can look like. Please welcome ETOS Chief Technology Officer, Christian Uber. Welcome, Christian. Thank you for joining us Hello. at Red Hat Summit. Could you share more about the unique challenges facing the automotive industry that might slow down software innovation? I think the biggest challenge is less unique than we would like it to be. It's speed and stability in automotive software development and integration processes. They are often still awfully slow and fragile compared to other industries. We have some excuses, for example, because safety is so important for us. And in the old start of production-oriented delivery models, our manual ways kind of did the job, even if it has always been really inefficient. But end-user expectations are changing and new competitors are doing this really well, delivering continuous innovation through software and creating new ecosystems at an amazing speed. 
In addition, having the responsibility to continuously and safely update a diverse fleet of hundreds of vehicle variants for decades is quite a challenge. This is a major technology game changer for our customers. I definitely agree with these challenges. How will Yita's middleware help address these challenges and fuel innovation for software-defined vehicles? We have a lot of experience with automotive complex distributed systems. For example, when we have done sensor fusion across multiple cameras, LiDAR, radar, and so on. In these projects, we have spent so much, maybe even most of our developers' time, in finding out why things didn't work as intended. The most awful corner cases, no loving creature could ever have imagined to even be, be possible. That's where all our time went and also our life energy. To level up our game, it was really important to create new technology helping out of this. How can we assure that our system behaves very deterministically in very complex, highly concurrent open world environments? Our middleware brings you exactly that. Situations that in the past, in the last generation, took us days to reproduce, if we managed at all, now take minutes to load into your dev environment, to step through in your debugger, and to fix. Developers love it. Well, I haven't been a developer for 20 years. I also loved it. What excites Yitas about collaborating with Red Hat around in-vehicle operating system and open source in general? Well, first, I love Linux. For over 25 years now, I think there were very few phases in my life where I didn't have it on my desktop or at least running on some box 24-7. I tried all the flavors of Linux. And I think the open source model has more than proven what amazing value it has created. About Red Hat, I have always admired to what extent you guys really mastered the trade-off between long-term stability and keeping your customer systems uh, up to date, completely hassle-free. You've also delivered this for heavily regulated industries like healthcare and finance. And to me, this fits really well. That's exactly what we need in the automotive industry. With regards to the combination of our products, I'm also excited to have a full Linux stack on all systems, PCs, cloud simulators, and the in-vehicle computers for our developers. Up to now, we have used different operating systems because there was no other alternative fulfilling our safety needs. I think this is going to be an amazing package. I am super excited about this combination as well. Christian, what possibilities do you see this collaboration will bring in the coming years? Right now is such an amazing time in the automotive industry. Not one year ago, we were still in this weird hype cycle where all these OEMs wanted to build their own SDV stacks, including the operating system. This is over now. Many are waking up with a severe hangover, hands empty, and I never experienced so many pragmatic, result-oriented, executive-level discussions. How can we get out of this deadlock? What role open source could play? And who would take over what responsibility? I think 2023 or 2024 is going to be the year where the dominant SDV architectures of the next decade will emerge. Our partnership is right at the center of this, and I'm really looking forward to working with you guys. Christian, thank you so much for joining us at Red Hat Summit. I know this is only the beginning of Red Hat and Yitas. Thanks for having me. Smart cars are one edge use case. But what about smart industry? Sensors, monitoring devices, and other technologies have been used in manufacturing and other industrial settings for decades. Historically, these devices and platforms ran on bespoke proprietary systems. But the operational technology, OT ecosystem, is taking the lessons of enterprise IT to heart. And open source software is now driving the innovation engine of industrial technologies as well. Let's take a look at this in action and welcome Red Hat's Chris Murphy to the stage. Automation has long been a part of manufacturing. But now, AI is being combined with automation to drive even more efficiency and deliver better products. 
Today, we want to show you an example of how using visual AI on a small form factor edge device running Red Hat Device Edge can detect defects on a factory floor in order to save money for businesses. First, let's define the problem. Every business that manufactures products has to worry about defect detection. If an issue can be detected as quickly as possible, product waste can be reduced, and customer satisfaction can be improved. By using AI and visual inspection models in the manufacturing plant, we can quickly detect defects and keep defective product from reaching customers. So let's explore this use case. A business in the food and beverage industry has to package their product and label it appropriately. Many different issues can arise on the manufacturing floor in this process. In the case of bottling beverages, labels could be missing, applied crooked, or misprinted. Bottles might not get filled correctly, or the caps might not be sealed properly. AI models can be trained to spot issues and communicate to the control systems to remove the defective products or stop the manufacturing process. This video shows use cases running in our booth where the bottles are coming down a conveyor belt, getting labels applied, and then using AI to detect issues. This is running on top of Red Hat Device Edge. Red Hat has all the tools you need to build and deploy Edge AI to your manufacturing floor or any other location where your business can gain insights from what is happening in real time. Red Hat Device Edge combines Red Hat Enterprise Linux with lightweight Kubernetes using MicroShift to bring you the stability, security, and trust of RHEL with additional features that are designed to address the unique requirements of Edge, while allowing you to utilize existing IT skill sets and common tools to develop Kubernetes applications in the core data center and deploy them seamlessly to the device edge. Defect detection is just one example use case of Edge AI. There are many use cases across many industries, including manufacturing, retail, telco, automotive, and the public sector. The good news is that Red Hat has with Red Hat, we can use um, all the tools and our platform to deliver this to you. Customers can build their AI models using Red Hat OpenShift Data Science and then run those models anywhere, utilizing our open hybrid cloud strategy that reaches from the cloud out to that small device at remote locations. So please come to Red Hat Central in our Edge booth to see more Edge use cases and to talk to us about how we can help you bring your Edge use case to life. And now, welcome back to stage, Francis Chow. Our ongoing collaboration with industrial control leader, ABB, is another evidence of edge transformation. With ABB building on Red Hat OpenShift and the forthcoming Red Hat Device Edge as the open, consistent foundation for future solutions innovations. Today, ABB and Red Hat are pleased to announce the latest milestone in our partnership, the availability of ABB Ability at Genius. Red Hat OpenShift and Red Hat Device Edge, along with the backbone of RHEL, will drive consistency for Ability at Genius across operating environments. This also enables developers and engineering teams to use existing skills to manage operational technologies. With our common platforms, 
ABB is bringing the standardization of the enterprise data center to the industrial edge. Let's hear more from ABB about how they are working with us to bring consistency to the unique edge scenario facing their customers. The world is changing for all of the industries faster and faster. At the same time, it is also important for ensuring the safety of the environment. Scalable edge and cloud solutions help to visualize and analyze data to reduce energy consumption, to reduce CO2 emissions. Availability are genius provides a way to access data from the automation system and a huge number of connected devices. Agenius allowed us to combine our expertise in automation in the OT space with the IT experience of Red Hat to actually work together for successful customer deliveries. Red Hat's Edge solution allows ABB to store the data locally and be able to deploy applications dynamically for the analysis to get their real-time insights. By delivering these solutions, we don't only help the business of our customers, we also do the right thing to help our future well-being in this world. Please welcome ABB Chief Technology Officer of Process Automation, Bernhard Escherman. Yeah, I'm glad to be here to be able to talk about the partnership between Red Hat and ABB and the work that we are doing together on the Industrial Edge platform. Now, industrial, what does that mean? Imagine yourself in a power plant, cement plant, chemical plant. Our customers operate continuous processes, typically 24-7. And particularly if they are operating critical infrastructures like in water or energy, shutdowns are extremely expensive. Our automation system is also crucial for the safety of plants and people. Imagine yourself in a chemical plant with an exothermic reaction controlled by the automation, so we better make sure that it works perfectly 100% of the time. The plants that our customers are building are also having a very long lifetime compared with the lifetime of the typical software that we are developing. 50 years is not uncommon. And since the market requirements are changing, during the lifetime of the plant, we have to make sure that we are able to evolve the automation systems in line with the market needs that our customers are facing. Now, the automation system is actually the central connection point for thousands or tens of thousands of smart devices producing data in the plant with cycle times of milliseconds. And the automation system is very well suited for dealing with that amount of data to control the plant for operational reasons. But now, the new requirement is that we need to use the full value of the data, which means contextualizing it, taking it out of the plant, and bringing it together with data from IT systems as diverse as weather forecasts, or data from the ERP. This is needed to make more informed decisions, and it can help to increase productivity, yield, decrease energy consumption, optimize maintenance. Now, this is exactly where scalable edge and cloud solutions come in. Our genius solution securely connects to the automation system, and extracts the data from the operational environment and makes it available to connect it with the IT environment in order to optimize assets and processes either locally in the plant or for the whole enterprise. 
ABB and Red Hat in this area are, of course, extremely complementary. ABB has been a number one in process automation and knows the requirements in these specific verticals very well for decades. But now we want to also use the horizontal capabilities delivered by the IT environment outside in order to be able to flexibly manage all of the containerized microservices that we want to run across hybrid hardware deployments. Now, since this might sound a bit abstract, let's go to a specific concrete example. One of our customers invests in and operates offshore wind farms in the North Sea. So you've got a lot of these wind turbines, and they all connect to a very big offshore platform, basically a huge electrical socket with lots of equipment from where the power is brought to land onshore. Now, our automation system is offshore to manage all of the operations of the equipment on that platform. But in order to monitor and to optimize the operation of this wind farm, we might want to use the data out of the operation system together with other data, either close to where the operation is, offshore, on the edge, or we want to use it on a customer infrastructure on land to do some optimizations based on applications that are running, running uh, maybe in the cloud. Now, all of this is operating fully autonomously, 24 hours a day without human intervention and helps to make sure that we always have clean power. So this is, I guess, a great thing that we can contribute together with our partners in Red Hat. Thank you, Bernhard. I love hearing the work your customer is doing to drive renewable energy. It is so important that we work within our ecosystem to deliver solutions that help solve some of the world's biggest challenges. Yeah, absolutely. And I guess it's just the beginning of the journey. Um, we have to deliver edge solutions and hybrid edge and cloud solutions that are as reliable, as safe, as secure as the industrial automation systems that our customers have become accustomed to. And uh, that will certainly continue to pose some challenges for the future. Uh, but I'm uh, extremely uh, uh, looking forward to working on these challenges together. Thank you, Ben Hoi. Thank you. <clears throat>
then the issues are caught and fixed in development. Since everything we do starts in open source communities, it's not surprising that we believe that security should start there. And it starts with collaboration between DevOps and security teams whose objectives are oftentimes at odds with each other. But cloud native application security requires that type of partnership as well as integrated workflows and tool chains. At Red Hat, we understand it may be tempting to try to do this all on your own. Most of you have CI CD best practices. You're trying to integrate security and scanning into those pipelines, identify vulnerabilities early on in development. It's all really hard to do consistently in a repeatable way. This is why we've assembled a comprehensive approach to software security with a single integrated service, because everything we do at Red Hat is open. I'm sure you're unsurprised to know that we have an open approach, an open methodology to vulnerability management. Our goal is to make customers more confident in the applications that they write, which they then deploy through these pipelines from source to code to production with greater security. SigStore is a great proof point of how our approach is able to inject greater trust into the software supply chain. SigStore is a tool that automates how components are digitally signed and checked for a safer chain of custody that traces software back to the source. We believe trust comes from being open and from our partnerships with communities, which is how SigStore was born. With a known trusted supplier like Red Hat, our customers can have greater trust in the software they're using, and developers are better able to release new software versions and updates faster than before and with greater peace of mind in ops and infosec teams. We do this in collaboration with our closest partners, giving you the tools and services to build a comprehensive DevSecOps ecosystem and deliver security-focused applications across hybrid clouds. Let me introduce Red Hat Trusted Software Supply Chain, our solution that enhances resilience to software supply chain vulnerabilities. The key components are trusted application pipelines and trusted content, as well as Red Hat Advanced Cluster Security Cloud Service. Combining these tools and technologies helps Red Hat customers maintain a stronger security footprint without stifling innovation efforts. To show you how all of this works, please welcome Vincent Dannon and Burr Sutter. Thanks, Ashash. At Red Hat Summit 2022, we showed you advanced cluster security for Kubernetes. And what I love about it is the policy and compliance enablement. And what's new is our cloud managed service, which is now in limited availability. Well, I got to tell you, I want to I want to show it to you right now. I know we showed it to you in 2022, but it, we really want to walk back through it one more time, just real quickly. You can see right here on my screen, I have the dashboard up. I have seven clusters I deployed around the globe. I have all these violations. I'm looking at all these deployments. I, I love the dashboard aspect of it. But what you said about compliance and policy is super critical. Let me flip over there very quickly. You can see we can have compliance with different things like CIS Docker, CIS right. Kubernetes, HIPAA, NIST, PCI, uh, PCI, and all those things are in there. And I can also work with different teams. So I can come over here and work with the back-end team in the Frankfurt cluster. I have a nice Frankfurt cluster here. And I can say, hey, you're out of compliance with these policies. You're only at 49%. We can improve our game together, right? We need to. OK, OK, very good, very we good. We need to. Well, what I, another thing I love here, though, is the risk. Because I love being able to see, of course, all those vulnerabilities, but identify what is most risky. And if I drill down on this specific one here, you can see I might have like a, a crypto miner in action right now, uh, some struts and some problems there. And one thing I love about this, it, it actually takes a baseline. So it's not just the image, it's the pod itself and the process itself it's looking at. So if I look at this process, and yep, you can see someone came in here and ran a crypto miner on this pod. You know, how they got in there, I don't know. Let's see who the bad guy is. It might have been me. OK, well, we know somebody's got a little side hustle going there. We won't worry about that for too long. But I'll show you one more thing. Okay. The, the network graph is also new as part of this cloud service that allows us new visualization. Let me load it up real quick. Again, let's go back to that Frankfurt cluster. 
look at the different namespaces, and I can see across all those deployments. And the reason this is important is because this is a Kubernetes native security tool that'll help me understand what that network topology looks like yeah. and help me secure it, because you don't want the finance namespace talking to the marketing namespace, talking to the manufacturing namespace, right. and it can generate those policies. So there's just so many amazing features already in this environment, and that's why I love advanced cluster security as part of the trusted software supply chain. So just great stuff. Right, and that's great for deployment and for security operators. Uh, but my focus is on securing the software itself, the software that we build, and that's what my team at Red Hat Product Security does. So when I talk to customers, some of their biggest struggles are seeing CVs showing up multiple times per week, sometimes multiple times per day. And we certainly feel that pain in product security. And we, can't, we know that we can't fix everything, right? And we, we want to avoid being surprised. So is there a way that maybe you can help us avoid some of those ugly surprises, like catching some of this stuff in development? I mean, what's in it for me and my team? Okay, okay, I like that idea. And I love the fact that we can think about this from the software developer perspective. So I'm a software developer. Let me flip over here to my IDE. I'm gonna drop right here into Visual Studio Code. Okay. And you know, if you're a software developer, you might basically go to Google and look for a certain thing, a certain library you might be interested in, maybe Stack Overflow, a little copy and paste. Oh no. This is XML, by the way, for people who haven't seen this in a while. You know, it's got these angle brackets. But this is the Palm XML. This is what Maven developers would do. They would come in here and copy and paste it in. And you can see that right away, we're gonna give you, through our dependency analytics plugin, this violation, this warning, and tell you there's something wrong with this. Okay. So at the point of entry, when the developer is working on that code base, we can tell them, hey, there's that struts2 vulnerability that kind of hurt a lot of people out there. Or maybe that log4j one that was so exciting just a little while ago. So these are all in here. And, but let me show you one more aspect of this. By the way, this works with package.json and requirements.txt. It, it'll also work with IntelliJ. So be looking for this new plugin. But look at this report. I'm going to actually drill down on it here real quickly. So not only do we tell you about the critical vulnerabilities that might be in that open source package, but what's really new here is we're going to give you specific recommendations about where to replace that package with an artifact that Red Hat has rebuilt. So let me find one here. Let's go look at this one. So right here, you can see that through the artifact naming, the dash Red Hat in there basically says Red Hat has already rebuilt that artifact. We already provide support for it. And if I click on it, you can see that we also provide a software bill of materials, an SBOM, mm -hmm. and a VEX, a Vulnerability Exploitability Exchange. Good. So between these two metadata files now, as a developer, I can know, here's the ingredient list, right? That packaging, if you think about a food package, that ingredient yep. list on the back of the package. And with the VEX, I can know what's exploitable and what the remediation is. All of this, by the way, is known as our Red Hat Trusted Content and will be available very soon. Nice. That's a great focus on the code. But what about how we build it? Right? Sometimes those build pipelines can be really complex. And it gets more complicated when you have multiple ways to build different products. And sometimes it's a real struggle to know what everybody's doing. And we should have consistent security considerations in place across it all. OK, OK, I got something else for you. I've always okay. got more, right? All right. So check this out. One more thing. We got, we got, as part of the trusted software supply chain, I got this amazingly cool trusted application pipeline, another cloud service where you can build software the way Red Hat builds software. This is our next generation of our productization engine for doing container images. And let me just go ahead and get going here. Okay. I'm going to hit Create Application, and I'm going to drop in my URL for my Git repo so the developer has done their coding. They, done, they did their Git commit. They did their Git push. And I'm going to say, import that code. It's going to look inside that code base. And that code base might not have any Docker file in there. It might not have anything other than just regular old code, regular old Java code in this case. And it'll understand what it looks like. It could have been Node.js, Quarkus, Spring, Python, any of those items there. Okay. And then I'm going to just leave the recommendation and basically say import, right? Create that application. And at this point, it onboards that application into our opinionated, recommended CI, CD system mm -hmm. based on Tekton and Argo CD. And this is that next generation of our internal productization pipeline for container images that we've now made public for everybody here. You can see my build is up and running, and look at that. I got the build cranking along now. Wow. So that looks great from an onboarding perspective, but I need a robust pipeline that solves more than just this. Right? I mean, consistency in deployment is great, but what about the earlier steps in building that code? And there's other pain points. You'd mentioned S-bombs. That's something that people keep pestering me for. You've got to help me solve some of these problems, Bert. 
Okay, 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 I understand. So we're gonna get there. Check this out now. All right, let me flip to a pipeline that's already completed so we can kind of get it moved this further along. But you can see this pipeline is an advanced pipeline and this is actually one I've also customized as a developer. So we practice pipelines as code. You can see we do things like git clone or repository. We can do a network isolated build with prefetching dependencies. When we build a container, we also automatically generate the SBOM, the software bill of materials at that point in time. Yep. We apply lots of other checks and balances, whether it be source checking like we did with the trusted content we talked about earlier, or maybe with Rock CTL to integrate with ACS. And in this case, not only do you get the scanning that we talked about earlier, but you also get policy violations right in the pipeline itself. So the deployment YAML, those secrets, everything is defined correctly by the developer before it moves down the pipeline. And as we said, the SBOM is right here also, that software bill of materials, much like that food packaging thing we talked about earlier, right. it's just an ingredient list, right? What do you think is involved in this particular application? All the stuff that's there, it's a machine readable file, it's a JSON file. But let me, sh let me show you one more cool thing here. Okay. Okay, so you might have saw this cosine command right here. I'm gonna go ahead and just drop down to the command line and run it real quick, and let's do that. So this container image we're producing includes the attestations, the signatures using SigStore, that incredibly popular open source project that validates that everything that went into that image, we know where it came from and we know who made it. And we know exactly how the pipeline configured it. You can see right there, there's the attestations, signatures, SBOM, and all that can ship with that container image as we ship it out the door. All right, all right, that's pretty nice. That makes for that nice immutable historical record. Uh, and security teams love that. But what about hard and soft gating letting security teams make their own policy and having it applied consistently. You said it was customizable, but how do I make sure that the wrong things aren't being customized and those policies are being put into place? Okay, that's a really good point, really good point. Uh, okay, so right here, you can see I've run a bunch of pipelines already. I've also run integration tests. So okay. across these series of components of microservices, we can not only produce those container images, but also execute a series of tests, one of which is known as our enterprise contract. Now this is a technology that has 43 out of the box rules based on the Rego policy language, but you can also fully customize it to do the tests that you want. Okay. And so for our security team that wants to make sure the developer didn't remove the CVE scanning or do something kind of maybe bad within the pipeline, I can go in here and say, okay, what is the base images? Uh, so what base images are required to push through this pipeline? Maybe I have to have no CVEs. And, and as an example here, so yep, as an, uh, you can see right here. And this is so important because what we're doing is providing that salsa provenance. If you've heard of supply chain levels for software artifacts, yep. so we're putting all those things in place with those proper attestations. We understand the provenance, we know where it came from, and we can validate before it rolls out that everything meets our standards. Wow, oh, Burr, I'm, uh, I'm impressed and I'm not too easy to impress because that's pretty awesome. I mean, it means that everything going out meets that same standard, which is critical for security practices or consistent security practices. Well, and I think that consistency is key yeah. because now we can basically have this application rolling out across the open hybrid cloud. You can see right here, I have multiple environments all, de uh, all deployed around the globe, whether it be Amazon Rosa as an example, or I have Azure, I have Google, I even have a GKE, EKS, AKS, all of which are targets for deploying of this container across the globe. And so with that, I can roll everything out. That is awesome, Burr. Thank you so much for sharing. At Red Hat, we take building trustworthy and resilient software seriously. So we took a real honest look at how we could improve that process and make it better. And I'm really excited that we're going to be using this internally and really glad that we're going to be able to share the same with all of you. This is Red Hat Trusted Software Supply Chain. Come check it out. Many of these pieces are available today. And also, we have a breakout session that happens right after this session that we'd encourage you all to come to. We'll do a slower, more deeper dive de demonstration than what I did here. But Vincent, I thank you, and hopefully you like this new capability we have for internal people, and we're making it external. I'm looking forward to it, Burr. Thank you so much. All right, thank you. Please welcome Red Hat Chief Technology Officer and Senior Vice President of Global Engineering, Chris Wright. <laughs> that was pretty cool. Uh, trusted supply chain, I love it. Uh, I'm gonna switch gears a little bit. Study after study has found that most of us would rather lose our wallets than our mobile phones. You feel me? I'm one of those people. 
each upgrade provides new capabilities and, and faster speeds that ensure that we continue to spend an astounding one third of our waking hours on our phones. I think it's more like two thirds for my kids. But our need for speed comes at a cost for telco providers and their sustainability goals. According to a Guidehouse Insights report, telecom operators account for 2 to 3% of total global energy demand. This puts telco service providers near the top of the list of the most energy intensive companies. And while 5G networks are 90% more energy efficient than 4G in terms of the power consumption per unit of traffic, according to ABI research, they are very likely to cause a dramatic increase in energy consumption. This is due to the implementation of MIMO transmission technology as well as the level of network densification. So what if we could optimize and reduce telco service providers' power consumption without losing any performance on their networks? We're excited to announce a collaboration between Ericsson and Intel and Red Hat to achieve greater than 20% power savings in radio access networks. This is the first of what we hope will be many commitments to help enterprises meet their sustainability goals. We're starting with the telecommunications industry and targeting the RAN, which is the biggest consumer of energy in a 5G network, over 70%. Red Hat and Intel are partnering with Ericsson to bring 20% power savings across both user plane and control plane functions by dynamically throttling PNC states uh, of Intel cores to match the dynamic workload profile. And the most important part of all of this is that this can happen with no loss in performance, no dropped calls. So I'm excited to bring on stage Jenny Barovian Panhorst from Intel and Eric Parson from Ericsson. Please welcome Intel Vice President and General Manager of Network Edge and Compute Division, Jenny Barovian Panhorst, and Ericsson Head of Cloud RAN Engineering Unit, Eric Parsons. Thank you, Eric. All right, so Jenny, let's talk about why Intel wanted to do something about sustainability and really why you jumped into this partnership. Yeah, thanks, Chris. I'm really excited to be here today. Intel has had a long-standing commitment to sustainability since the mid-90s, and there are really three tenets to this mission. First is reducing our own footprint through sustainable silicon manufacturing. Second is designing energy-efficient products. And finally, collaborating across ecosystems to create scalable solutions. We've got a long history of innovation with Red Hat driving digital transformation, combining sil silicon experience with software innovation. And today, we're leveraging that history to accelerate and scale solutions in response to one of the world's greatest challenges, which is climate change. And Intel's already seeing great results in helping our network and edge customers reduce their carbon footprints and achieve their sustainability goals. And in fact, we were recently recognized by ABI as the number one most sustainable telco vendor, which speaks to our results driving sustainable computing. That is an awesome recognition. So Eric, can you talk about Ericsson's evolution of where you are today and why the work in RAN is so important? Yeah, thank you, Chris. And uh, it's really great to be here uh, with you, Jenny, and, uh, and, and Red Hat, Chris, uh, and the partnership that we have in the radio access network. Uh, it's uh, the focus on sustainability is really important to all of us, and it appears in this uh, in, in this technology uh, that we use every day of, of our lives, if you want. But let me put it in a bit of a broader context. So, uh, Ericsson's been driving the wireless uh, networks for 2G, 3G, and 4G, now 5G, and with these latest generations, we've had the potentially the potential to significantly. Uh, improve the productivity and, and efficiency on a range of infrastructure and industry sectors. And that all leads us towards a low carbon footprint economy. Now, a big part of the wireless, net, uh, wireless uh, energy, though, is in the wireless network itself. 
Uh, and when you look at the wireless networks, there's millions of cell sites around the globe. A lot of that power, a lot of the energy is consumed by the radios that you often see at the top of the towers. But what is also vital is the, is the energy that's consumed by the compute platform that exists at all those cell sites. And that's why we're here together, Intel and Red Hat, is to talk about the energy efficiency of that compute platform across millions of cell sites. So as we're moving from a uh, dedicated, a very highly tightly integrated appliance type solution to that compute to now cloud and virtualized uh, technologies, we really need to leverage everything we can bring to the table as an ecosystem from acceleration technologies, energy efficient compute and advanced power management driven by AI so we can get that energy efficiency down. So with uh, Intel, uh, we've been uh, working to ensure that successive generations of Xeon processors, Jenny will talk about it, uh, can support the expected growth in data demand that everybody is, uh, is benefiting from. And then, you know, and that's really table stakes. But then what we're talking about in terms of a software and hardware combination is the, uh, the ability to leverage C states and P state technology and taking us further by another 20% in terms of total power savings um, uh, that we can get from the network. Now, you know, when, when we talked, I think, first time, Chris, about uh, the RAN workload, I think you said, you know, this is a pathological worst case scenario for, uh, for, for, for power savings because of the demands of, of the radio. Um, but the building blocks that we're using for, for RAN are really building blocks that are available for everyone and can cut across a whole wide range of, of industries in order to, uh, to get the sustainability uh, that we're all looking for. It's a great point. I might have called it the pathological worst case. Uh, but it shows that we can take these building blocks and apply them to a really intensive workload and still achieve results. So, Jenny, uh, we've talked about achieving you know, meaningful energy efficiency and meeting our sustainability goals. Uh, through the use of intelligent infrastructure and advancements in hardware and then smart software. So give us a little peek. What are the core technologies that we need to make this happen? Yeah, at Intel, we're constantly pushing the boundaries of performance and efficiency with every product generation. And Eric talked about the great results that Ericsson is seeing in the RAN. And there are several technologies that made this possible. Our fourth gen Intel Xeon scalable processors offer up to twice the VRAN capacity with the same power envelope compared to the prior generation. And our fourth gen Intel Xeon processors with VRAN boost lower power consumption by an additional 20%. But we also need software that can and optimize power consumption without compromising performance, as you said before, Chris. And so the new Intel infrastructure power manager for 5G core delivers up to an additional 30% of CPU power savings, leveraging built-in telemetry and application-aware power management. And so this is another great example of optimized usage of P states and C states, which Eric and, and also Chris talked about earlier. And if we look a little bit more broadly, Intel is partnering with the ecosystem also to innovate cooling technologies such as cold plate and liquid immersion cooling to lower overall system power consumption. And if we look even more broadly, reducing waste is also a key imperative for sustainability. And as an example here, Intel is a leader in initiatives like the data center modular system specification in the Open Compute project, which is really aimed at improving circularity through modular server design for data centers, telco, and edge. I love all the details. Uh, so Eric, give us a, a little view of the energy performance, and then maybe where the big opportunities are in the future. Yeah, that's good. Uh, so we're all in this together, right? And I think that's, uh, that, that's really uh, an important part of it. When we look at the CSP, so the communication service providers, what they see is an incredible growth in data demand. And that growth in data demand drives the need to, draw, to put more equipment into the, into the network to support that capacity. And what we have to do as an industry is to break the energy curve that goes along with that. And so, you know, specifically in the cloud RAN domain, what we're talking about here is just a start. Uh, we have 
to continue to drive new innovative uh, solutions that will allow us to break that energy curve so that in fact we're, uh, we're reducing the, the total amount of energy uh, while we're, at a, we're at a lower rate uh, than, than we are increasing the total data consumption that's happening every day. So I think that's really what we have to, uh, to, to work on. Well, all of this shows the, the joint work in the RAN and the collaboration, you know, how important that is for us to be working together. So I'm really excited to see what we do next. To wrap up, let me ask you each a quick question. As all of us are working towards net zero operational emissions, what's the top priority for Intel and for Ericsson? Jenny? We're all in this together, as Eric said. Collaboration is absolutely key to achieving the era of sustainable computing. And we really focus on directly engaging across OEM, software vendors, service providers, policymakers, and so many more parties to not only drive emissions reductions, but also promote industry-wide improvements in sustainability overall. And in addition to focusing on the energy consumption, we need to focus on decarbonizing that energy that we consume. And this really means building networks that are carbon responsive, taking maximum advantage of sustainable energy sources by intelligently orchestrating workload placement. And we really see an opportunity also to par partner more broadly with Red Hat and with others to combine the power of edge computing, 5G, and AI to transform operations across so many different industries, whether that's energy, manufacturing, smart agriculture, smart cities, transportation, really the opportunities are endless. So the promise really is meaningful gains in performance and quality and business value while also improving sustainability overall. Beautiful. Eric? Yeah, we're all in this together. I really like that. And so Ericsson is, uh, like very many uh, others, is, drive, is driving action on the path to becoming net zero by 2040 across the complete value chain. And that includes the supply chain, the portfolios that are in use in the networks, and, and their own activities. And so to meet these objectives, uh, we continue to develop the innovative solutions that enable the operator networks to use as little energy as possible while managing the expected growth in data traffic that I've been talking about. In the context of Cloud Rand, we do this closely with an ecosystem. We do this very closely in, in this context with Red Hat and with Intel, but with a broader cloud ecosystem uh, to take it, the latest hardware and software innovations that can be brought to bear to achieve our goals. We've been working together, and this is really just the starting point of, of what we can do. And so I, I'm really excited to talk about this and share this with all of you. I encourage everyone to check out a joint Intel, Ericsson, and Red Hat sustainability demo located in the Intel booth. It highlights how, how our ecosystems come together to impact and achieve our sustainability goals. So thank you, Jenny. Thank you, Eric, for being here today. I appreciate it. All right. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. It's not just about the telecommunications industry. So let me introduce you to Kepler. Kepler, or Kubernetes Efficient Power Level Exporter, is a project founded by Red Hat's Emerging Technologies Group with early contributions from IBM Research and Intel. And it's a community-driven open source project that captures power use metrics across a wide range of platforms focusing on reporting, reduction, and regression so enterprises can better understand energy consumption. In other words, Kepler helps us see and analyze power consumption in any enterprise, in any industry. Kepler can enable a host of innovations in the open source community that allow service providers to better observe, analyze, optimize, and then document power consumption of cloud-native applications. These include power consumption reporting. So Kepler metrics are a time series, and they can be used to build dashboards that present power consumption at a variety of abstraction levels, like pods, containers, namespaces, or different compute nodes in the cluster. Next, we have 
power-aware scheduler and auto-scaling capabilities. So Kepler metrics can be utilized by a Kubernetes scheduler to place the upcoming workload on the compute node that is projected to improve performance per watts, ultimately reducing the cluster power level consumption. And then similarly, Kubernetes autoscalers can use uh, Kepler's power consumption metrics in autoscaling algorithms to determine the resources needed to better achieve energy efficiency. And then lastly, there's CI CD pipelines. Kepler can be used in the software development lifecycle to help produce more energy efficient software. For instance, Kepler can be deployed in CI CD pipelines for software testing and release. And Kepler's power consumption metrics can help developers measure, analyze, and then optimize software stacks. So let's see how all this works with a demo from Red Hat's Emily Brand. Thank you, Chris. And we would like to thank IBM and Intel for investing in this endeavor with us. We are in this sustainability journey together with our clients, with all of you. Our vision is to enable your sustainability officer to pull your IT ops data directly from your clouds to show your estimated carbon impact and footprint. So let's see how this is done if you are installing Kepler right now. It's as easy as installing Kepler on your OpenShift cluster with an operator. The operator deploys the eBPF agents and AIML technology. You need to run the Kepler daemon set on your nodes to export the energy metrics to Prometheus. In this demo, we use Grafana to visualize and regionalize the metrics to view the actionable data. Each of you, of course, may want to use your own data for your own corporate estimations. You can see the Grafana dashboard has regionalized the power consumption of each of the workload data centers. You can then sort and rank based on your mean and max power consumption metrics. You can see the pod power consumption by pods, package type, and regions. You can also map the energy consumption by location, by hour, and by namespace. You leverage Open Data Hub to collect and aggregate the data. Each of you can integrate your own specific data sets you are using for your own estimations. An important aspect of Kepler is the Kepler model server, which trains a set of linear regression models for single pod energy consumption, estimates for CPU, and DRAM. The estimate can be done by attributing a relationship between performance metrics and energy consumption. The Kepler model server trains to more accurately estimate pod and container level energy consumption. The vision for the future of Kepler is to take the actionable data from your trained models to allow you to move your high energy workloads to lower carbon impact regions when you leverage multiple clouds and multiple data centers, as many of you do today. If you would like to learn more, we have a session today, and you can visit the booth to see the demo live in the expo hall. Also, please visit sustainablecomputing.io to download Kepler and to get involved in the community today. With the knowledge gained from Kepler, companies can better assess how to optimize their energy consumption and continue their journey to meet their organization's sustainability goals. As they say, you measure what matters, 
and this matters a lot today. Thank you. Verizon has been in the forefront of driving 5G. We believed in the cloud native principles, whether it's agility, rolling out the services, as well as the economics of the scale, and making sure that it's just not about Verizon. We were bringing the entire ecosystem along. La banca 4.0 para nosotros es la evolución de las soluciones tecnológicas del banco. El proyecto de Banco Galicia es el claro ejemplo de que combinar tecnologías como inteligencia artificial y microservicios con resultados concretos es solamente el comienzo de un cambio de paradigma en la construcción de soluciones en la industria financiera. We just begun this journey because we believe that the future is so bright. We are helping deliver services to the neediest population. They need healthcare. They need cash assistance, they need food assistance. And knowing that our platform has helped enabling that is incredible. Please welcome back to the stage, Matt Hicks. For 17 years, we have recognized our most innovative customers as part of the Red Hat Innovation Awards program. Over the past week, we have introduced this year's story to our community, and you have chosen your favorite story to be named this year's Red Hat Innovator of the Year. This year's winner is KPMG. KPMG's innovation platform this year is their resource integration suite, or CRIS. It improves access to key government support services by connecting legacy information systems with modern applications. The platform started in the state of Tennessee, but is quickly expanding, not just to other states, but also to other use cases. Congratulations, KPMG. I love uh, ending on a note about innovation because it speaks to possibilities. The possibilities of what we can accomplish when we work together and focus on solving problems. For the last two days, we talked about the realities you're facing and how Red Hat is positioned to help you meet those challenges and drive your business forward. We also introduced our new products and services that can help you on your path. Red Hat Developer Hub to boost the efficiency of developers in your environment. Red Hat Service Interconnect to make hybrid applications within the reach of any developer. Ansible Lightspeed to bring the power of AI to Ansible playbook creation, and then event-driven Ansible to connect the power of Ansible to always-on automation. And as we speed up development and operations, we introduce the trusted software supply chain capabilities and the advanced cluster security service allowing speed without losing security. Last but not least, we introduced OpenShift AI to help you capture the power of open source developments in AI and apply them to your business problems. Those are just a few of the exciting innovations you can look to Red Hat for but you can see what we're here to do. We're here to help you and make your business run more efficiently to in turn allow you to innovate. Don't let these moments pass you by and don't be paralyzed by them. Resist that urge to just hunker down. Innovation doesn't stop due to resource constraints or market changes. It's created by them. There is no better moment to start capturing the innovation of open source 
and this is where Red Hat stands ready to help through our open hybrid cloud portfolio and expansive partner ecosystem, we can be your innovation engine. And let's make this a moment in technology and a moment in our industry that we all remember. Thank you so much for joining us this year at Red Hat Summit. We hope you have a great rest of your day as we have a lot of sessions ahead of us. And we look forward to seeing you all again next year with us in Denver. Thank you.